And working memory is being able to hold information in mind and manipulate it. Now that's different from just short-term uh, rote memory. Short-term rote memory is just being able to repeat back what you've heard or hold it just long enough to follow through. For example, if you, someone gives you their phone number, a phone number to dial, you just repeat that, and you walk over to the phone and dial the number, and then it's gone. But that's, that's just immediate short-term memory. Working memory means that you're holding something in mind and manipulating it. So if you're doing a math problem, you may be, uh, a math story problem, you may read the first part of it, and there's also often interfering information as well. But there's two or three steps you have to follow. So you start doing the first step while holding that other information up here. And after you do the first step, you continue on with uh, completion of the problem. What often happens is kid with, kids with working memory, uh, short-term working memory weaknesses, they get caught up in the calculation, and sometimes they'll just say that's the answer to the problem, not realizing, no, wait, this is just one step. We have to go back and continue. So, or if you're, you know, if you're writing something and you are trying to think about what you want to say uh, in the next sentence, you, as you're writing the sentence, you have to be able to hold the next bit of information up here while you're writing that sentence and then bring it down. It'd be very similar to taking notes in the classroom where you are, or taking notes like you are now. Being able to write what you just heard and while you're in the process of writing that and holding that, and here comes new information. And then being able to take that information and hold it while you write what you just heard. So, uh, working memory can be pretty important as far as uh, being efficient and problem solving accurately. So it's, it's like having a mental workspace where information is just stored for just a very brief period of time. And that means just seconds. I, in some of my reading they've said 20 seconds uh, is all you need to hold that information. Um, and it has to be used over for a long period of time, and it has to be probably repeated and practiced before you can put it in short-term memory. But a lot of the things you do throughout the day are just things that you have to hold on to for a short amount of time in order to move on to the next task. And so if you have good, if you have good working memory, it does help you, with, help you can, uh, stay focused on what you're doing and it helps you kind of screen out distractions and it's being able to, it's just, it's like keeping information online as you're problem solving. Uh, so again, there's an example again of computing a math problem or carrying out measurements when cooking. Uh, if you're following the directions, do you do something? And if you get interrupted by the phone, have you been able to hold what you just did in mind long enough to know that you go back and continue the next step. So it can also mess up cooking too. <laughs> so, so as I said earlier, short-term memory, short-term auditory memory just requires you to store the information for a short period of time and, just, and then just repeat it quickly and then just follow through. But the working memory, you have to manipulate the information. And of course, it does have just a limited capacity. You can't, if you had, if you were trying to remember too much, too much, if you were trying to hold too much information in short-term working memory, it's not going to work. You can only hold. In, again, in my reading, I read that four bits of information, four pieces of information, is about the maximum. Um, so, um, as, we, as I said before, there's an association between memory and attention, and. So people who perform poorly on working memory tasks often have difficulty with attention. And ADHD, working memory weaknesses, is a, is a characteristic of ADHD, especially the inattentive type, when you just can't stay focused. Um, okay, let me just move on here. There's some. So there's, they, typically, I, I see this all the time whenever I test kids who have ADHD, they have problems with holding on to information. Uh, they, uh, 
usually do poorly on tasks where you have to repeat uh, numbers backward, or if you give them mixed up letters and numbers and ask them to hold the information in mind, and then get them back to you sequentially, they struggle with that because that's, again, you're having to put some information up here, manipulate this information, and then pull that down. For example, if I ask you to put these, put these letters and numbers in correct sequential order, and uh, give me the, the uh, well, give me the numbers first and then the letters. So if I say 6A9T7, so you'd have to go 679, what else did I say? <laughs> A and T, I think. Yeah, something like that. So you, so you have to do that. And, uh, or you ask someone to um, solve mathematical problems without uh, pencil and paper. And so, you know, you give, them a, you give them a story problem, and of course you throw in something else, and first of all they have to multiply, and then they have to subtract. But often what happens is they'll multiply, and then they'll say, no wait, read that to me again. And then I have to reread it. Uh, I have to say, when I was looking at uh, subtests on IQ, um, IQ tests, it's interesting that you know, they do statistical analysis of the sub individual subtests on an IQ measure to determine which one has the highest uh, amount of G. G is like a theoretical concept that means the best measure of intelligence. And interestingly, when I looked at all those subtests, arithmetic has the highest considered the best measure of intelligence on a Western scale. I know I was surprised too. Right after that comes similarities and uh, we you have to explain how things are alike and vocabulary and comprehension, which is social knowledge. You have to ask social questions. But when they did the statistics, it was the arithmetic subtest that had the highest level of G. And so it tells you something about they must really value, you know, being able to manipulate numbers and hold information in mind. Some of the research has shown that, uh, well, a lot of the research has shown that having strong working memory is often related to also having good abstract thinking and problem solving abilities, being able to think on a high level. So again, having good working memory and good processing speed means that you can think fast and probably integrate a lot of information together at once and come up with an overall solution or solve, be able to solve a problem because you don't get bogged down with the memory or processing speed weaknesses. Is this making sense or is it kind of, kind of big? But, okay. Typically children with higher scores on working memory tasks achieve better assessment results too on uh, group achievement tests like reading and math and written language because they can just think quickly and they're more accurate and they answer more problems, especially if it's a timed test. So, you know, the research has shown that there's a strong association between uh, written expression and working memory, and that's because they, there's, they have uh, more vocabulary usage, uh, the, the ideas expressed in an essay are more coherent and sequential because they're able to hold information and express an idea and you know, continue elaborating on that idea. Uh, so, and it also, has, of course, it has association between memory and math skills, as I, as I uh, explained, you know, that accuracy in word problems, being able to, you know, come up with strategies for solving uh, the problem, and of course, you know, kicking out the information that's irrelevant and just ignoring the irrelevant information that's included. So, you know, here's, some, here's what working memory weaknesses can do. They can interfere with how well you can just hold information in mind, and of course following directions in the classroom. Someone who has working memory problems is going to have trouble with, if the teacher says, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn to page six, and I want you to answer the odd items, and then circle the correct verb tense, and then be sure to put that in your folder. Uh, and so they may just start to lose it. Now some of that is rote memory, but some of it's also working memory, because you have to turn to the page, and hold this in mind that, okay, I have to do the odd, or was it the even? 
I can't remember, but anyway, it was, so you have to hold that information and then uh, go back, carry that task out, and then just remember those multiple directions. So that's the kid who often either raises her hand and asks again, or just doesn't do anything, or may look at their neighbor's work to see what they're doing, which is a good, good strategy. So, uh, and also working memory interferes with self-monitoring when you're, when you're doing tests.